everybody. Good morning. Thanks for joining us here at the vet clinic at the Houston Zoo. Uh, we're here at quarantine to introduce you to one of the zoo's newest babies. Um, her name is Betty. Um, I'm here with Cheka in the primate department. Um, baby Betty is here in quarantine because the clinic is accommodated um, to take care of babies and the parents are up here to have some quiet time and time to bond with um, little Betty and everything. So here's Cheka. Hi, my name is Cheka and welcome to our Facebook Live. I'm a primate keeper here at the Houston Zoo. And uh, we're gonna kind of tell you a little bit about why Betty's here and how, um, how the vet clinic and the primate team is working together to take care of her and kind of a little bit about her backstory. Um, I can go ahead and take her out now. So baby Betty um, is about two and a half weeks old. She was born on January 15th. She's actually named in honor of Betty White. She's pretty cool. Um, she was a big animal activist and a big zoo supporter. So we thought Betty would be a very fitting name for her. Betty is a Geldes monkey. Uh, these are small primates that live in South America. And typically the parents give birth to just one at a time, which is pretty different from a lot of other tamarind and marmoset species who typically give birth to twins. Uh, Betty was about 34 grams when she was born, so she's actually on, on the small end for a baby Geldes, um, but she's actually doing really well. She's very strong and she's picking up quickly on feeding. Um, and the reason we are hand raising Betty right now is because uh, her parents are both first time parents and when we found her, she was born overnight, Geldes typically give birth overnight, um, and one of our keepers found her in the morning and she was off mom. Um, so we had to intervene pretty quickly. Um, with baby primates, if they're not hanging on to mom, that usually means that they're, they're weak and they're not strong. And if they're not strong, that means they're probably not getting enough milk from mom. Um, and their body temperature can get, get very cold very quickly. So we had to intervene and get Betty um, and make sure she was okay and healthy. And um, sometimes first time moms don't really know what to do. And Kylie is her mom, she's about six years old. Uh, she is a first time mom. Opie is her dad, he's also a first time dad, but he does have uh, some experience with younger siblings. But Kylie wasn't really sure what to do, so we're gonna end up having to hand raise Betty, um, but we ended up bringing up her parents to the vet quarantine building so that Betty can be raised uh, right next to them so that that gives us greater chance of success for, for reuniting them in the future. It's really important for primate babies to know that they're primates and to be raised around their own kind. So during the daytime, Betty is usually around her parents um, in her incubator where we're able to keep her warm. And so the parents are showing a lot of interest in her, so we're very encouraged by that. Um, and the whole hand raising process will take about three and a half to four months, um, which at that point we will hopefully have Betty weaned off of milk and onto solids, and she will hopefully be back with her family where they can all come back home down to Wortham World of Primates. We're gonna do a feeding here so you can kind of see what that looks like and what kind of care she's getting here. Let me just hand it off to you. I will take over. Little Betty gets um, fed every two hours. Um, around the clock care, she gets fed every two hours, even overnight. She's got about 10 caregivers right now and we switch out with our schedules. So we'll come over to this table. And usually she knows what time it is and she gets a little vocal for us. So because she is so tiny, we don't have a bottle. She gets fed in this little syringe. And what's in here is Infamil, which is um, a human formula mixed with some Ensure and a protein powder. Different species require different nutrients. Um, and so that's why we do a little bit of a mixture. If you notice, Betty is hanging on to a stuffed animal. Um, and so we're trying to mimic um, what she would be doing if she were on mom. If she were on mom, she would have to be hanging on to mom the whole time. Primates don't hold their babies on there. They have to be able to grip on to mom's fur. So we provide her a little surrogate stuffed animal and she has to hang on to that the whole time. Um, you might be able to see, but her, she has little claw-like uh, fingers and that helps her to grip on to things. She's 
been good from day one, taking these beatings. Like Jennifer says, she um, gets fed every two to three hours around the clock. She gets 11 feedings per day right now. Um, and she's getting less than a mil of formula at every feeding. So it's a pretty small amount, but that's because her stomach is very small. So we have to feed her frequently in small amounts. And as she gets bigger and she gains weight, we'll start to decrease the amount of feedings we're giving her over time. And mom would be cleaning her up after all this. So we use little wet cotton balls to mimic mom cleaning her up. Wipe her little milk mustache off. Just like any kid, she doesn't like it. Hides her face, a little bit of grooming. We also do exercises with her to help make sure that she's gripping well. So a lot of times after she's done eating, we'll move the stuffed animal around, we'll gently bounce it to make sure that she's got a really strong grip. Uh, because that's what she's going to need when she's back with her parents. Normally she would be riding on mom's back or mom's belly when she's nursing. And the cool thing about Tamarins and Marmosets is that dad helps take care of them too. So for the first few weeks of life, mom will carry them around so that they can nurse and bond. But then after a few weeks, dad will start taking baby and carrying the baby on his back. And then as time goes on, if there's younger siblings or older siblings in the family group, they will also start to help take care of baby. So uh, it's really cool that it's kind of a family affair. It takes a village to raise a baby and um, she's going to have to get used to all that. So we want to make sure that we're mimicking um, a natural setting for her as much as possible. If you have any questions about Betty or the care that we're giving her or about her parents, please feel free to ask us. We'd be happy to answer them. Jennifer's grooming her with a toothbrush right now. Grooming is really an important part of primate behavior. That's a way for them to bond and it's a way for them to clean each other. So like Jennifer said, normally uh, mom and dad would be grooming her pretty frequently, frequently keeping her clean. So we use this toothbrush to gently groom her and she does seem to enjoy it. And it also helps get some dry skin off of her on occasion. Just to remind you guys, we are in the quarantine building behind the scenes at the Houston Zoo at our vet clinic, and this is baby Betty. She is a Geldes monkey, and she's about two and a half weeks old. She only weighs about 40 grams, so she's pretty tiny. Mom and dad, adults, typically weigh um, about 550 to 600 grams, so a little over a pound. So she won't be fully grown till about a year, but they don't get too big. They're not that big of a primate species. Babies have a little hard time controlling their temperature on their own just yet. She's starting to get really good about climbing around on her stuffed animal and she's getting more active the older she gets. In the beginning she pretty much slept all the time. Um, but now she's, she's very alert, she's aware of her surroundings, and she climbs all over her stuffed animal. Sometimes she'll be sleeping on the bottom of it, sometimes she's on the top, so she's, she's getting a lot more active. Dana asks, when will she be back out on exhibit with mom and dad? That's a great question. So the whole hand rearing process for Geldy's monkeys is about three and a half to four months. Since baby Betty was a little bit on the smaller end when she was born, it may take a little bit on the longer side, but we're hoping by the end of three and a half to four months that she will be back with her family. And once she's successfully reunited with her family up here at the clinic, they will all be moved back down to their home and we're the world of primates. So hopefully, by say April or May, we will have them back down at Wortham and they will be able to go out on exhibit when the weather is warmer. And typically during the day, her incubator is rolled into the room where mom and dad are so they can have a visual on each other all day long. Um, and at, at the end of all of our feeds, we do take Betty up to um, her parents so that parents can see, their, see her, they can touch her, they can cradle her and do whatever just so they have that visual and they continue that bond with each other. The parents, the parents do continue to be very interested in Betty. We had another question about why Betty was being hand raised. 
Um, and to recap, basically when we found Betty, she was born overnight um, to her mom, Kylie, and her dad, Opie, and we found her not on mom, and that's pretty abnormal for a baby. If a baby is not on mom, that means that the baby is probably not strong enough to grip onto mom. Um, and sometimes that's just a matter of uh, mom not necessarily knowing what to do because this is her first baby, or it could be that mom's not producing enough milk yet. Um, so we had to intervene since Betty was not able um, to be carried by her mom and to get the proper nutrition she needed. But since then, um, Kylie, her mom, has shown a lot of interest in her. Like Jennifer said, they take her up to Kylie and Opie at, after feedings, and they will reach out and touch her, and they're very interested in her. So those are really great signs. Um, and so we have a lot of hope that they will be back together successfully as a family. Geldy's monkeys make a very high-pitched vocalization. Betty has started to do that. She's not doing it right now, but um, it's a really great way for primates to communicate with each other. So it's a very high-pitched, shrill vocalization. And um, Betty is able to vocalize to her parents, and her parents are able to vocalize back to her when she's in the same room as them. And that's a, um, a really great thing for her to learn um, how to be a monkey. What are some fun facts about this species? So I mentioned their vocalizations. Another way that uh, these animals communicate with each other is through scent. So um, on the bottom of their bellies, they're actually pretty bare chested. Um, they don't have a lot of hair. They have scent glands there. And so they can rub their bellies and rub their limbs on branches or propping um, and scent mark things. And that's another way that primates communicate with each other. So that's gonna be really important for Betty to learn as well. Another cool fact about these guys is they only typically give birth to one baby at a time. A lot of other tamarin species, like cotton top tamarins, they usually have twins. Um, but geldies have just one at a time, but they can have um, two babies in a year. A lot of times after Betty's feeding, she does tend to get sleepy. She's got a full tummy. Um, and since she is still so young, she does have a lot of sleeping to do. baby geldy monkey does during the day until they get a little bit older. They'll get a little bit braver and start, start getting off of mom here and there. But for now, she's doing exactly what a baby geldy should be doing. Someone asked what it's like to hand raise a baby primate. Uh, that's a really interesting question. We've had to hand raise um, a lot of different species of primates here. Um, if at all possible, we, we try to keep them with their parents and have them be parent raised because that's the best situation possible for them. But unfortunately, sometimes um, we have to intervene and we have to hand raise them. Um, and it's a very rewarding experience. It's very time consuming. Um, just like human babies, uh, primate babies have to have round the clock care. So we have someone here 24 hours a day with her. Uh, we have a day shift, usually our clinic staff does all of her daytime caregiving, and then between the clinic staff and between the primate staff, we're covering evenings and overnight shifts. Um, so it's a very time-consuming experience, it's very rewarding, and the end goal is always to have her back with her family, which is where she belongs. So you can see Betty's starting to climb around a little bit on her stuffy. Um, this is really good. It helps strengthen her muscles um, and get her used to climbing around. As she gets older, she'll start to venture off her stuffed animal and start to learn how to jump around and be active. As she gets older, we'll start to give her enrichment, things to uh, manipulate in her environment. Um, but right now at this stage, we're still pretty focused on just keeping her fed, making sure she's warm, um, and keeping her in close uh, visual contact to her parents. This is also a really unique experience for multiple departments in the zoo to work together. Uh, the clinic is uh, very experienced in helping 
can raise a lot of different types of species, not just primates. So it's been really helpful that we've been able to transport the whole family up here where they have a lot of space um, and a controlled environment for Betty to be in. Hi, Sissy. <laughs> Y'all are having some great questions, keep them coming. We know this is a really cool experience um, and it's very unique to be able to get to see um, a species like this up close like this, so. Someone is asking what Betty's feeding schedule is. So Betty gets fed 11 times in a 24 hour period. During the day, um, that's every two hours. At night, she's starting to stretch those to about uh, two and a half to three hours. So she gets fed at 6 a.m., 8 a.m., 10 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 p.m., 10.30 p.m., one in the morning and 3.30 in the morning. And before her first feed of the day, Betty gets weighed. So she gets weighed every single day. And what we want to see is that she's gaining weight every day. Um, it might be small gains because she is so small, but we want to see that she's trending upwards in her weight. That signals to us that she's getting enough food and that she's absorbing that food into her body the right way. Um, so every day, Betty's weighed in a little scale and a little bowl on her stuffed animal. And we adjust her feeding amount every day based on her weight. So if her weight goes up, her feeding amount will go up every day. And when Betty was born, she was 34 grams. Um, now two and a half weeks in, she's about 41 grams. And again, she was born on the small side, so it may take her a little longer to catch up weight wise, but behaviorally and medically, she's doing great. She's uh, caught on to feeding really well. She's very strong. Um, so we're very encouraged by all those things. Well, the zoo does have a full veterinary staff. So we do have five veterinarians um, with us and she does get regular checkups about two to three times a week. They'll come in and just do a look over. They'll listen to her heart, listen to her lungs, just to make sure all is well and that she's growing appropriately. And so far, so good. Well, we want to thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we enjoyed having you with us to learn about baby Betty. Uh, we'll be back again next Wednesday for another Facebook Live at 11 a.m.